bookish friends and welcome back to another episode of book terms you may need to know uh, which is basically my little series that I have created where I talk about terms that you're going to hear on booktube or book talk um, especially if you're looking to start one yourself uh, that can be helpful to know so Today, as you can probably tell from the title, we are talking thriller terminology. So we are looking at the books that make you sweat, the ones that make you clinch, the ones that make you go ooh at some point. So starting off, what is a thriller? This is the definition that I pulled from the internet. A thriller is a suspenseful, plot-driven book that a crime has not yet occurred or there's some gray area there, but mainly a crime has not yet occurred, but there is the threat of a crime happening. Um, and now that's where it gets a little weird with like mystery thrillers because that changes things, but we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but something also that is very unique to thrillers is there's usually a comedic element to them. Like just there's a comedic relief character or lines that are kind of funny, even if they're sarcastic. Sub-genres of thrillers. There's not as many as romance, that is for sure. This is a much more condensed genre. It's a little bit more black and white about what things are. There's less gray area, and there's just more of a formula with suspense, because obviously with romance, which is the last video I did, um, you can expound like you can create these crazy outlandish scenarios which you can do with suspense but a lot of times you are you know there's a certain box because it is plot driven you have to hit you know you have to have these good rising actions and a good climax and if you're gonna have a plot twist what's it gonna be it can't be predictable so you have to be really clear on what you're doing with your plot um so for subgenres, it's much more condensed. First of all, we have a psychological thriller. These are ones that mess with your head and are my personal favorite. Uh, they're the ones that, you know, something is just off. Either there's an unreliable narrator who has, you know, either some sort of condition or illness that causes them to, you know, say things that just really mess with your mind. Or there's a lot of red herrings and uncertainty and you're kind of thrown in all different kinds of directions that you get thrown off. An action thriller, which is more so, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. There's a lot of action. There's probably explosions. There's fight scenes. These are probably going to be more of your like dystopian post-apocalyptic type thrillers where you're going to find those things. Uh, then we have a crime thriller, which obviously the police or FBI are usually involved. Um, what I found in my research is that a crime one specifically has to have some sort of law enforcement agency involved. This could be a DA's office, the CIA, whatever, but it has to have some sort of law enforcement involved for it to be considered a crime one and also a crime has to occur or the threat of a crime has to occur. So someone sending letters to the police saying they're going to do this thing kind of like, you know, Unabomber. Then we have political. So these deal with a lot of government corruption. Um, Stacey Abrams put one out recently. Usually there's something with the presidency or Congress or the Senate, just all of that good stuff. Um, and someone's threatening to expose it or maybe already has exposed it. And now people are coming after them. Anything that deals with any form of government for that one, I'm just speaking from the US point of view because that's what I know. Then we have mystery thrillers. So these are ones where a crime has already occurred and they are trying to solve it. Now this is where I said there's that weird gray area of, well, if it's a mystery, then obviously the crime has occurred, but why is mystery in a separate category than thriller? There is a lot of crossover and like for me, my shelf here is mystery thriller shelf. It's both because so many of my books cross like you know nancy drew the well the inheritance games there's no crime uh but there's a mystery i guess that's the difference too is that in mystery doesn't necessarily have to have a crime in a thriller there has to be a crime committed not just a game a clue 
however you want to put legal thrillers these are your courtroom dramas these are your uh you know lawyers most of it's going to take place in a courtroom or in a law office and you know i just keep thinking of law abiding citizen i i don't know if that's a book too but i know it's a good movie uh, and that's just what keeps popping into my head when I'm saying like legal and government and that kind of stuff. We have spy thrillers, pretty self-explanatory. There's some sort of espionage, spy missions, maybe some gadgets and that kind of like, are they going to get caught uh, sort of feeling. Then we have sci-fi, again, pretty self-explanatory, but you're dealing with aliens. Maybe the aliens are threatening to destroy Earth. Maybe they are already destroying parts of Earth or taking people. Um... You know, I don't really read a lot of sci-fi. It's not really my thing, but I'm sure there are, I'm trying to think, I'm thinking like alien and predator kind of stuff. Domestic thrillers, which are my personal favorite. These are the rich people drama. These are the neighbors next door are not who they appear to be, like this sort of perfect family veneer, but not really. Uh, little fires everywhere, big little lies. What do I have? Um, people like her. All of those are domestic thrillers because they are, they're usually set in some little neighborhood or maybe even one household and there's not a lot of, you know, moving around. We're kind of in this world that centers around one person and, you know, doesn't, the drama itself and thriller aspects don't really extend outside of their sphere. For a thriller, there is a formula, and this is how you can probably tell if a book is a thriller or not. Um, there is a promise made to you as a reader that something is going to happen. Usually this is maybe in the prologue. Maybe the prologue is set a little bit in the future and we work our way backwards. Maybe there is, you know, just a statement made that kind of tells us this is what's going to happen. This is the direction we're going. And the author has to make good on that promise by the ending of the book to make it all come full circle to get us to that resolution. Uh, then there is time. There has to be time pressure. There has to be constraints. There's only a certain amount of time that this book can take place in. And we have to get from point A to point B by, you know, the course of a day, the course of a week, a month, a year, whatever. Somehow, whatever is happening has to be done. And we have to feel that time constraint while we're reading. Uh, and then, of course, you got to have trials, obstacles, tribulations, things that get in the way that you know, our setbacks the whole way through the plot so that that resolution gets drawn out just a little bit and makes it, you know, that much more satisfying at the end. Now let's talk about some different elements of thrillers that you can talk about if you're going to be reviewing one or looking for when you are reading a thriller to kind of distinguish what kind of thriller you're reading. Of course, we have a hero that's pretty much in every book. This is our main character who we want to succeed and prevail and sometimes in a thriller we think they are the hero and then they might be the villain. We don't know. That's why you gotta read the whole book. Um, but they're usually very likable, very charismatic, someone that you easily know is the good guy and want them to, you know, accomplish their mission. Then we have the sidekick. Your sidekick is your comic relief. Sometimes they can be a suspect depending on what kind of book you're reading um, or you think they're a suspect but they usually are kind of there to you know pull away from those really tense moments like maybe we just had a really tense sequence and then they have kind of like a funny argument with their sidekick. That all kind of encapsulates the sidekick. Then of course the villain. The villain has to be good in a thriller. They have to be evil, ruthless, conniving, even if the villain isn't a person. Like I'm thinking Home Before Dark, the house itself is kind of a villain. Um, you know, we feel the foreboding kind of evil feeling when we're in the house. But the villain can also be, you know, a system that is in place. It doesn't have to be a person. It just has to cause issues and be kind of ruthless. Uh, then we have a plot twist. I'm sure everyone knows what this means. This is the moment where you think you have it figured out and there's a twist and you are so, so wrong. I am notorious for figuring out the plot twist ahead of time, but I think that's just because I am a writer and I research these kind of things so I can see 
the piece is kind of falling into place before the twist happens. Um, but you know, some people aren't good at figuring it out and good for them because I ruin half the books I read. Uh, Red Herring, this is your, you know, the things that make you think you have it figured out, but really there to throw you off from the true plot or villain or, you know, scheme that is happening. There you have a cliffhanger. These are the things that keep you reading. They are the you know, end of the chapter where you're like, wait, what's going to happen next? So you have to keep reading or even the end of a book that keeps you reading like the Truly Devious series, all of them end on cliffhangers, except the third one, obviously, because it's the end of the trilogy. Uh, but they are things that keep you reading. And those cliffhangers are different. Uh, but they are very good. And I recommend them. And then of course, we have the climax. This is the big aha moment. This is usually either right before or right after your plot twist. This is usually like the big confrontation or you know something happens that just tips the scales either everything's gonna go right or everything's gonna go wrong. A few other elements that thrillers normally have are multiple points of view. My favorite multiple points of view are when we get the uh like good person and the bad person's point of view. For instance people like her we not only get the mom's point of view, but we get the husband's, who's not as great as everyone thinks he is, and also the stalker. So you get that dual perspective and kind of, it amps up the clock, like the time aspect, because you know that the villains, uh, you know what their time frame is, and you know what the other person's gonna have going on during that time, and you can kind of figure out when they're going to collide. Then we have character growth. Your character is not gonna be the same from the beginning of the book to the end of the book if it's a thriller. Think of, there was that TikTok trend where they were like, how I would look at the beginning of my favorite series versus how I would look at the end of my favorite series. That very much is what happens in a thriller. They are bruised and battered and beat up either physically, emotionally, and mentally. At the end of the thriller, they are different. Even if they feel satisfied, they are changed as a person forever by what has just happened. Now let's talk about some thriller recommendations. Started off, we are going to have a kind of domestic, kind of paranormal thriller, um, mystery thriller. And this is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. This is a big talked about book here on booktube. But this one has so many suspenseful elements and so many plot twists. This one truly I thought I had figured out, but I really didn't. And it made it so much more enjoyable with the fact that I was so thrown off. So you have lots of red herrings. There is somewhat of a time constraint here, but I don't think it's as big as other ones because we have you know not a crime but an event that happens and trying to come to that conclusion of why that event happened um is really important to the story and the daughter is trying to put the house for sale that her family fled in the middle of the night when she was young for absolutely no reason as far as she remembers her father has written a book claiming it was haunted and that's why they left and her mother has stuck by that opinion but her dad has since passed away and left her the house so she is going back to the place she vowed never to return to clean it up get it ready to go and put it on the market and then our thriller kind of unravels from there as she finds some very strange things in the house. That one also has multiple points of view. Uh, you get her dad's point of view like excerpts from his book and then her point of view as well. Next up we have another mystery crime thriller. Uh, this one has the kind of this event happened and now we're going backwards. So our time constraint is within a week of time or a few days. I think it's a full week. Um, but we also have a murder. So we have a crime. We have a mystery. The Guest List by Lucy Foley. This one also creates an element of suspense with the setting because the place they are kind of acts as a villain itself because they are on a remote I Irish island that, you know, you can't escape. There's a storm and they can't get off of it, but someone is murdered during the wedding and we have to find out why. Again, multiple points of view. We get a lot of different motives. Just about everybody has 
a motive in this book and I think that's something that a mystery thriller is really good at when you add that kind of clue element to it where everybody has the opportunity everybody has the motive but only one person is going to take it uh take the opportunity to get their revenge or you know usually killing is a revenge especially when there's a wedding involved like there is in this one then we have one that I also mentioned earlier people like her this is a domestic thriller about a social media mom if you notice these ones are pretty short so a thriller is usually not super long either it can be but I think they're better when they're short because you really feel the time constraint but this is about a social media mom who's being stalked again like I said before multiple points of view, lots of twists and turns, um, and getting a lot of that inner dialogue from a lot of different people is very fun to read in a book like this. One that I read a long time ago that I really truly enjoy and want to reread is A Danger to Herself and Others. This is a psychological thriller because we are in the head of a teenage girl who is being accused of killing her roommate and she now is in a psychiatric hospital and is being evaluated by a doctor and she wants to get out before she goes to court she just wants to go back to her very privileged lavish lifestyle uh but you know we have to figure out did she do it on purpose did she you know hear a voice in her head telling her to do it which is kind of a theme that we get throughout here and does she belong in a psychiatric hospital or is she really, you know, was it really an accident? Some other ones, uh, I read The Maidens recently, which is another psychological mystery thriller uh, about a string of murders happening on Oxford's campus. That one's pretty good. There's a cult element to that as well, or like a cult-ish element. Um, but that one, there really wasn't much of a time constraint. The time constraint kind of kept getting dragged out. Like, time would be extended because of the uh the aunt of the one girl who is going to college there and her friends are actually being killed so you see you know it kind of gets pulled on because she says well I'll stay a little bit longer with every murder that happens then we have the final girl support group I haven't read this one yet but I have heard a lot about it I believe it's by Grady Hendrix and this one is a horror crime uh, girls from slasher events uh, like the last surviving girl all have a support group and now they're being picked off by a copycat killer and it's coming you know it's coming down to the last girl and they have to figure out who is killing all these girls and why and one if you are looking for a sci-fi kind of oceany setting one is Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant Again, I haven't read this one, but I have heard good things. It deals a lot with the Marianas Trench, which is always very interesting. I think anything dealing with the ocean where there's a potential monster involved is much more suspenseful because it feels very real because we don't know what's in the bottom of the ocean. Um, not yet, anyway. And there is a ship that goes missing with this woman's brother on it. They are never to return. They want to know what attacked their sub, what took them, you know, down into the drowning deep. And now she's going out there in her own sub, in her own boat to find out for herself what was out there. So kind of a Leviathan uh, feel, but just a little bit more contemporary. So that is all I have for you guys about thriller terms and recommendations. If you guys like this series, make sure you check out my romance video. I did that one right at the beginning of February and of January and gave you a full comprehensive guide on all romance books because uh, that one was pretty long, not gonna lie. But yeah, and if you want to just see a general terms that you hear on booktube and book talk that may confuse you, I will link that video as well because that one I did about two years ago now and people really seem to find it helpful. But other than that, I will see you guys in my next video.